my name is Carl Sagan. Uh, some of you might already know me. I am an astrophysicist. I am a scientist, which of course means that I've been to college over five times. <laughs> now, I have also spent much time among the stars. And I wrote the screenplay for the movie Contact, which many of you probably know about, and I hung out with Matthew McConaughey several times, which is how I got the name Contact. <laughs> now, the reason why I am here today is to talk about the need for science. The need for science in our daily lives. <laughs> Amongst my time thinking and hanging out with Matthew McConaughey, I thought about it, and human beings are thinking enough, they aren't trying hard enough to really advance as much as they can as a species. So the need is greater than ever. So let me take you on a journey. A personal journey. The sun's. This is the planet Earth. From here, it looks rather peaceful. It looks like it's beautiful and there couldn't be a problem at all. But if we take a slightly closer look, obviously see that there's conflict happening all throughout the world that is tearing the human species and many other species apart. This is a great tragedy and much of this is caused unfortunately by religion. Now, right now in our present state of earthly conflict, we have the Iraqis who have been fighting the North Koreans, who look down on the Japanese, who are also at war with Texas, who who is of course at war with ducks, who are at war with seagulls. Thanks to science, we finally learned about many wars amongst other kinds of species on the planet, especially this one. And thanks to science, we put an end to the conflict. Although we can see clearly by this photograph, we can see who started it. This is religion. It's very violent, but somehow it makes sense. <laughs> now, religion is something that was invented by frightened, illiterate people. That's Muhammad. <laughs> for, for the sole purpose of destroying children. <laughs> which they just somehow enjoy. Uh, at this point you might be saying, Whoa, Carl, uh, what the heck is science? I don't even know what that is. Well, science is many things. Science is math man, beakers, science is microscope, a stack of books, and sometimes it's even a pencil. <laughs> hey, dude. <laughs> Science teaches us something very basic, something about logic that exists in the human mind, naturally. 
we naturally think if A equals B, then B equals AB, clearly. <laughs> However, B cannot equal A, because B already equals 12. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, at this point, it's easy to ask, what does science do? What does science actually do for our daily lives? Well, there are many different kinds of science that I show you, books and people. But, <laughs> There is also social science, which is the most important kind of science. It's the main reason why this formerly homeless man is now looking through a telescope. <laughs> and we all happen to be in the home of social science, the epicenter of that epigee of human thought, Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon is a wonderful place. It's a utopia of social science. Yes, Portland, Oregon. Full of positive thinking people, bright sunny days, and frequent electricity, which is always connected. Portland, Oregon is also known for its sustainable transportation. Women's suffrage. And most importantly, you might want to put on your 3D glasses for this one. All of you. Even if you have to pretend. Portland has no need for racism. They've cured racism. Yes, Portland, Oregon has clearly come a very long way. <laughs> But to understand where this kind of thinking originates, where does science actually come from? Who do we thank for this? To understand that, we'll have to go back in time to ancient Greece, where once there was a fisherman. And one day, the fisherman, he collecting his fish, and he had a fish, and then he had another one, and he really enjoyed that. However, one day, unfortunately, he lost his boat. So, in order to survive, this fisherman had to steal apples from the local marketplace. He had to steal apples in order to survive. Of course, in these days, stealing was considered a crime. But, one day, this fisherman thought to himself, hmm, if I were to get an apple cart of my own, I could steal all the apples that I want. <laughs> that man's name was Scientist. <laughs> this is where we get the word Scientist. <laughs> I'm a Scientist. <laughs> Thank you. Here's a closer look at Earth. <laughs> no, that's the country of Africa. <laughs> Which is the epicenter of the most conflict all upon Earth. If we were to accept the concepts put forth by scientists, the brave fishermen, if we were to incorporate that into a new religion, which united us all, this so-called Scientology, <laughs> everything would naturally work out just fine. If we were to all live under this new concept, this Scientology, we would come together. There would be no much. There would be no more war or AIDS or 
35 cents transactions on debit cards. <laughs> we would have no more of this. <laughs> no more of this. If we could all think and feel together. We were all to use our minds as conscious beings made of matter. We could get away from this and become a little closer to this. Oh, shit. <laughs> If we could just use our minds, we could get closer to this. One couple having a good honeymoon. <laughs> Science smells and tastes good, it does not. I think so. And I believe that you think so too. Thank you all for coming tonight. iPod, the battery's kind of low on my iPod. <laughs>